so I want to talk about why feedback matters. And I think feedback can be generally super useful, especially when we work in a team in any work that we work, but especially in development when you pair with other people. Um, and when researching um, this talk, I found a quote from a book that talks about the concept of feedback comes from cybernetics, the theory of control, which emphasizes the concept of a closed loop in a system, which really um, made sense to me working with programming, something coming in, something getting out. You get feedback from your program. If we want to define what feedback is, uh, we can talk about it. Uh, feedback can be defined as information about past behavior delivered in the present, which may influence future behavior. When we talk about uh, feedback at the work um, place, we think about three different types of feedback usually. We think about just normal feedback that you give to your peers or uh, people you work with. It can be casual and frequent. We think about coaching sessions when it um, helps somebody improve their skills and it's somewhat formal. And then we have performance reviews, which is much more formal, usually with a report and a manager uh, set at certain predefined times. Um, not all the time, usually not often enough. So why would we want to give feedback? When we think about learning, you can think about learning as soliciting, receiving, and integrating feedbacks. Like if you look at toddlers or babies, um, all they do is they look for immediate feedback when they do things, like if they touch fire, you'll get burned. Or, yeah, that's, that's usually a constant. Whereas... <laughs> So they learn very quick. Uh, we operate in the same way. We learn from feedback. Sometimes when we don't behave appropriately in certain situations, is usually because the feedback loop is too big and we don't get feedback back. For example, our health or the environment, which takes a long time to notice the impact of our actions of what we actually do. So we can't really moderate our actions well or fast enough. When we think about feedback, we usually think about the corrective time, the negative one that we give to people because they do something wrong. It doesn't have to be because when things, when things are not working well, but it can also be positive feedback for work well, for jobs well done. Giving constructive feedback when needed is essential to creating a productive work environment and it doesn't have to threaten your relationship with other people. By giving feedback, you show attentiveness to other people's uh, performance. You signal appreciation for a job well done. You can help redirect undesirable behavior, uh, point out a more productive course of action, contribute to others' learning and development, motivate and inspire others to higher levels of performance, strengthen your rapport with coworkers, foster upper communications and enhance teamwork, improve and improve team performance. So delivering feedback should be reserved to a doesn't need to be reserved to a team lead or manager only. It's up to all of us to give feedback to other people, and anyone should be able to give and receive feedback. So what, does ma what makes feedback effective? In order for it to be effective and heard and be used and implemented, it needs to be delivered at the right time and at the right way. It is more effective when it is frequent and in context rather than once a year when we don't remember what we've, what we've done three months ago. Uh, it has an objective to achieve a specific outcome. It's realistic in expectation of what you expect the other person to react and do. It shows respect to the recipient. It is a two-way conversation between you and the recipient. It is expressed as a point of view rather than an absolute truth. And lastly, it assumes an opportunity to follow up. So in summary, you can say that feedback is uh, a good feedback will be clear, specific, timed right, non-judgmental, and speaks only to behavior. But even when we know that how useful giving feedback is and how valuable it is, we might still be hesitant to give it because we fear uh, certain things. For example, uh, we worry that the recipients will dislike um, us and the relationship will be affected. We assume the recipient might not be able to handle the feedback. We recall past incidents where the recipient resisted feedback and didn't act on it. We feel the feedback will not be useful in certain situations. We feel awkward or even be afraid of a volatile situation because of giving that feedback. 
Other reasons could be lack of experience, whatever I do, I must do perfectly. Uh, if I tell them, they will not like me. If I mention this, there will be a conflict and I can't deal with conflict. But really, it's a lot easier to give feedback if you don't have to be perfect when given that. In reality, fearing it and not giving it, it's a worst case scenario. It will cause unproductive, self-constructed and strained environment at the workplace, uh, which is unhealthy for everyone in the organization. Even if giving feedback seems intimidating, it helps to remember that doing so is essential and beneficial because it's an opportunity to share observations and elicit productive change. One of the worst things you can do to somebody is create a vacuum when you don't give them feedback. Um, the same is with the relationship back home. Um, I'm currently teaching an engineering academy and I asked the, uh, my students, what do you need from me? And one of the things that I said all the time is feedback, critical feedback. Tell me what I'm doing good and tell me what I'm doing wrong and how I can improve. Providing feedback on a regular basis, both positive and critical, will reduce the overall magnitude of the feedback. So it makes it easier to receive you know, the, the corrective one and clear the air for a more productive work environment. But feedback should happen, most definitely, but not only when performance review times comes, it should happen on an ongoing um, process. So situation when we should give um, feedback is when we've done good work, when we have successful projects and resourceful behavior. When the likelihood of improving a person's skills, we should give feedback. Um, when feedback is expected from us, when it cannot be ignored, when you have a problem that's, you know, you need to fix it. There are also some wrong times to give feedback. For example, um, when we don't have all the information available on the incidents that we are trying to give feedback on. When the feedback only offers concerns for things the recipients cannot change or control. When the recipient seems highly emotional or vulnerable after a difficult event. Maybe let them calm down a bit before you give them feedback. When you don't have the time or patience to deliver the feedback in a calm and thorough manner. And when feedback is based on personal preferences rather than a need for more effective behavior. For example, I prefer to work in the morning, some people prefer to work late at night. There is no need to tell people when to work. So when positive feedback is given, like I said before, frequently the negative feedback seems less threatening and more uh, credible. Um, Generally, when giving or receiving feedbacks, there's a few four distinct skills that we can uh, use. Uh, solicit feedback, give feedback, receive feedback, and integrate feedback. And I'm going to break this down into the four um, skills. For soliciting feedbacks, um, there is a body of work that's called the nonviolence communications that talks about the difference between a request and a demand. When you ask some, something of somebody and they don't have the options to say no, that's a demand. So when you ask for somebody for feedback, it's okay for them to be able to say no, I don't want to give you feedback right now, and it's absolutely fine, and try not to punish people for not giving you the feedback that you want. How to give feedback. So there's um, an Acronym, which is the ASK acronym, which says actionable, specific, and kind. Actionable means that I can do something about the feedback that you gave me. It doesn't mean give me the solution to the problem and the action that I need to take. Uh, for example, saying to somebody that their accent irritates you, well, they can't do anything about that. That's not actionable. Actionable feedback is about some behavior that we have control over and that we can change. Specific. Um, means that it um, needs to be not too generic. For example, just saying to somebody, good job, is too generic. You know, they can't do anything with that. Um, it's not very useful. The more specific we can be, the more useful the feedback will be. Um, it's most, most effective when you are specific about job skills, time management, and knowledge of the workplace. It might be easier to ask somebody to join the activities rather, for example, to demand that they just enjoy teamwork. And kind. Kind is not the same as nice. It's not like saying something sweet or using the sandwich approach to give somebody feedback. Um, kind is about being honest um, about the impact that something has on you and not trying not to project or judge the other person for that behavior. Basically talking about the impact your actions have on me rather than projecting what it means about you. Or you didn't do that or you're stupid, which we shouldn't use anyway, but as an example. So be honest about the feedback that you're about to give and the reasons for giving it. Be sure that you're not reacting to your own needs 
uh, and preferences rather than what's best for the team and the organization. And lastly, be mindful that your work style and preferences do not match how other people work and are productive. It's harder to influence people's attitudes, habits, and personality traits. Uh, feedback is most likely to affect learning, growth, and change in areas that less threaten uh, recipient's sense of self-worth. Uh, if the recipient sees the feedback as something that's beyond their control, they will ignore your feedback, um, be frustrated, and lose motivation. Uh, on the other hand, if it focuses on behavior that they are able to change, then it will have a more effective, positive, lasting effect. The best time to give feedback is um, for positive feedback, consider doing it straight away and in front of team members. Uh, as an example, sharing is the key to team success, increased efficiency and motivation. For critical feedback, find a private place, a side, maybe a tiny bit um, later when you had some time to think about it, to communicate more effectively about the situation when it's still fresh in your mind. Um, just be careful that if you do it too quickly, uh, it will not lack forethought and be counterproductive. Always gather the necessary facts and information and have time to reflect about what you're going to say. When we receive feedback, there are three triggers uh, that make getting or receiving um, feedback very difficult. One of them is truth, that we are afraid that whatever the other person is saying is true. And, um, Sorry, and how it will affect our relationship. And then also how it will affect my identity, what I know about you know, who I am. Um, Dania talked about impact versus intent. Um, so intent is the purpose behind the giver's mes message, which is not always aligned with the impact, how the receiver is getting the feedback that you're trying to give them. For example, you can have feedback that says, oh, I think you should work on being more confident. So what I'm trying to say is when you don't know something, it's okay, be confident to admit it and ask questions. What the other person might hear is that I come across as doubtful and passive. Maybe I should act like I know everything. So difference between the two. When we talk about receiving feedback, we should really talk also about the compass of shame. <laughs> Uh, which represents the different ways we all respond to difficult feelings like shame, guilt, anger, fear, but mainly shame. Now, we all land on all four different points in this compass, uh, and we all use those strategies at different times. But usually, we, one of them resonates with us the most. I think um, I am the withdrawal one. So, north is the withdrawal, when you physically or emotionally leave the room and check out. So, you either walk out of the room, or to be alone or emotionally check out of the conversation. South is avoidance, which is, might be the cause of addictions. Uh, for example, avoiding shame by getting into something else like food, sex, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, even work is um, a strategy for avoidance. East and West, um, we have this attack self and attack other. Attack self is someone that says something bad about me, then I will take it on, I'll believe it, I will compound it, and I blow it out of proportions. Like somebody says that um, I can't do math. Yeah, of course I can't do math. I've failed in math in, class, in, in grade two. Um, I, I didn't, but as an example. <laughs> Uh, attack other is the hardest for people to admit because it's the most unacceptable behavior in our society, being aggressive towards somebody else. But usually avoidance is the most socially acceptable strategy, strategy especially if we try to avoid something by going to work, because work is the solution. So these are all strategies that we all learned since childhood to deal with shame, and each one of them has positive effects. So the attack other people, don't take shit from anyone. The um, Attack self, never harm anybody along the way. Uh, the withdrawal people know how to take the time and slow down and take a break from the trigger that caused them shame. And the avoidance people get a lot of things done. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the idea is to not let the strategy own us, just like with emotions. So when receiving feedback, if you feel any of those strategies come up, don't feel shame for having the impulse. Just consider that. Um, don't ignore it, don't give up to it, just bring, um, think about that and allow us to, just thinking and considering that and being aware of them will allow us to not completely be taken over by them. Um, 
when receiving feedback, here are a few other tips. So it is an opportunity to improve your relationship with the person that's given you feedback uh, by showing your awareness of the impact that your um, own behavior and action on other people. Listen carefully to the other person's point of view and consider their intentions. Um, ask questions if you're unclear about anything. Um, let your defenses down, which I know it's hard because if you get upset, try and breathe deeply and take a short break. Resist the urge to justify the behavior or actions that are being criticized. Try to listen to the other person instead. Identify what you can learn from the feedback. Focus on um, how you can improve in the future and how you can help make this better with the effort. You can always have the right to verify the feedback that you've received with other sources of information. You know, one person telling you one thing doesn't mean it's the truth. But always thank the other person for the feedback because it's a gift that can improve your relationship with them. One of the things, um, yeah. one of the things that um, it's important when you listen to other people giving you feedback is active listening. Um, how many of you have had a conversations with somebody else when instead of listening to them, you thought about what you're going to say next? That's, that's not active listening. So active listening is be fully in the moment, uh, put yourselves in their shoes, uh, pick up some key points and repeat to the speaker to, to get to make sure you understood what they were trying to say, and develop curiosity, open mind, and a desire for continuous growth. Some things not to do when you give feedback. Uh, if people don't, um, so we all have a compulsion to give other people feedback sometimes. We try to share, you know, the, the um, wisdom that we have. But if, you, if people are not interested, um, if you're not really interested in helping other people, um, then you'll, then you'll just do well to um, start with your feedback by opening your own motives for inspections while you're doing that. Because if somebody doesn't want the feedback, they will not listen. Do not give advice on what they should do or should not do, um, unless they ask for it, sure. Because if you are, you're robbing the person the opportunity to integrate the feedback and make it what it means for them uh, most meaningfully. Um, this is the process where they go through um, Receiving the feedback, integrating it, finding what it means to them, and then learning and working out what they need to do next. In this case, you're just giving them a solution that's not really theirs to own. Don't do a sandwich approach, which you give two nice feedbacks with a corrective or critical feedback in the middle. Um, it has two problems. The first problem is it's disrespectful to the other person's ability to receive critical feedback because you're trying to make it nice with two nice... Um, I don't think you can handle this feedback, so I'm going to say a couple of nice things in the way. So, um, and secondly, it dilutes your, your positive feedback whenever you give that. Uh, and integrating feedback. When you get feedback, which we said it's a gift, make it your own. Try and think how it can improve you. And also, you always have the option to not take it on if it doesn't work for you. That's absolutely fine. When we work in development teams, one of the things that we get feedback from our team members is retrospective sessions, which is a core part of the process for keeping projects running smoothly, uh, encouraging open communications and hitting project goals. Um, there, um, um, in my previous work, we did office retros every two months, and we've done client project um, retros every week. Uh, there are various ways to run them. Uh, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, some of them are simpler, some of them are less. Uh, but basically, the idea is to keep it simple, keep talking, keep um, communication channels open where people can communicate with each other and give each other feedback. Uh, we also, when we work in technology, we do uh, code reviews for pull requests. Uh, and there's a good, um, Thoughtbot has some guides about uh, respectful ways of giving feedback to other people on their code. And for, for example, from that guide is ask questions, don't make demands. Um, ask for clarification if something is unclear to you, what they've done. Avoid selective ownership of code and be humble. Feedback is most likely to lead to positive change when the recipients trust the person giving it um, is reliable and has good intentions. So frame the feedback as an ongoing process of the workplace, uh, not as an occasional and arbitrary. Uh, the team needs to know that the ongoing goal of feedback is to improve the entire organization, not just a single person. Acknowledging positive performance frequently and publicly is a good start to building a culture of frequent feedback. Uh, so 
some tips for building respective um, culture guidelines. Praise effort, not ability. Uh, even with failed attempts, it helps build resilience and the determination. Empower everyone to give feedback, not just leaders or managers, it's about everyone in the team. Um, um, yep, yeah, I said that. Offer some positive feedback, sorry. Uh, encourage the team to help each other to solve problems. Don't just dwell on what's wrong. What's wrong doesn't help anybody. You can't do anything when you just talk about all the bad things. Set clear expectations and in encourage questions and make it okay to say no. So basically, in summary, the thing that I would like you to remember is that clear, specific, timed right, non-judgmental, and speaks only to behavior is what I would consider um, effective feedback. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's just a question around how you might be able to give and receive feedback when you're working remotely with other colleagues. So I find um, it's easier to give feedback when you see the other person and I can see the reactions of what I say on him. Um, and I'm more diligent in the text message messages that I write in Slack and the same in code reviews. Um, code reviews is a way to give feedback on actual code, uh, but when you talk to somebody, you can do video conference with them as well, as, as a way, yeah. Awesome. Uh, we might pause there. Another round of applause for Ellie. Thank you very much.